And we can't talk Roland Martin without this. You better believe I'm bringing some helicopter lures with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. I'm gonna make you throw a helicopter lure before we are all said and done. <laughs> Retro bassin, kicking some ass and wearing rayon jackets. Thinking about Bill Dance, watching these fish prance through my Ray Ban glasses. Ain't nothing better than 40 year old lures coming off of Zepco 33. Out on the bass boat, making beer cans float, doing some trespassing. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bassin. Welcome to Retro Bassin. By the way, if this is your first time here and you like to fish it old school, I'm talking about classic rods, reels, lures, and equipment from fishing days gone past. Well, stick around, consider subscribing, and be sure to hit that bell icon. Otherwise, you won't know when we post a new video like this one. So Bass and Buds, thank you for hanging with me as of late. We have been doing a ton of pretty cool studio stuff. However, I think you all know that I am itching to get back out on the water. It's not for lack of trying. We've actually caught a couple of videos in various stages of production out fishing on some of the local Texas lakes. But most of my time spent this week has been packing. In a few short days, I'm going to be hopping on a plane and flying to Florida. We're out there to visit some friends, but while I'm there, I hope to visit some bass. You guys have heard me talk about one of my favorite YouTube channels out there, which is Small Water Charters. There's actually a really cool uh, couple that runs that YouTube channel and that charter service. It's John and Lindia, and they're based out of Okeechobee, Florida, and they fish a little secret area known as Donkey Land. Now, if you ever tune into small water charters, you know that Donkey Land has just that. On any given day, I swear, uh, John and Lindia are cranking some monster, monster Florida bass. And more than once, they spot a, a legend out there too, like, well, Roland Martin. So I'm going to be hooking up with uh, the crew a few Fridays from now. We're going to be heading to Donkey Land, and I am going to see if I can make those two fish it old school. So what I've got here is a tackle box that I've loaded up with some lures for Florida. So we're gonna run through this. I'm gonna show you guys just what I've got in store for that retro road show. And more importantly, John and Lindia, I'm gonna show you guys <laughs> what I've got in store for you. In the meantime, I've been sitting on a little bit of mail from some bass and buds. So we're gonna crack open a few quick packages for the camera and then I'm gonna show you my old school Okeechobee box. Let's see what we have here. <laughs> I see a couple lures in here, but first let's check out the note. Oh wow, somebody's got much better handwriting than I. Retro, thank you for the pose. They'll be put to good use. Uh, you may have a couple of these baits, but doubles are always good. Oh, wait a minute. Is this from Andrew? Okay, yep, Bass and Bud Andrew. He commented on a recent video about some of the pose that I had picked up, and I actually sent him a handful, hoping he would put them to good use. So thank you, buddy. Um, what else does it say here? Uh, first off, we've got a, a weedless deep we are. Ooh, a weedless deep we are. That might be a Florida bait, huh? We've also got a Bagley fat cat. Oh, wow. Yeah, they do not make those anymore, and he's got the shallow diver. Also, we've got an RC Cola man's crankbait. Yeah, I kind of spied that in there. I can't wait to see that. Um, not too sure, but I got it from um, the swag bag in his first Red Man now BFL tournament. Oh, that's awesome. Number four is a spinnerbait. It's not retro, but I do build my own stuff, and I know you like homemade stuff. Think it will be a killer on those ponds. I absolutely love homemade baits. I don't care if they're new, for sure. I uh, love the channel. You're a great presenter. Uh, I don't know about that. And your channel will go far. If you're ever in the Chattanooga area, hit me up. I'll take you fishing. And then for some Coors Banquets, <laughs> my retro brand. Well, I got to tell you, um, I tend to be a Coors Light guy, 
but I never mind the banquet beer. Actually, hold on. <laughs> okay, so speaking of Coors, it's kind of funny. I just went and grabbed something. I'm in the process of doing a little bit of organizing and hopefully setting up a home bar. So I've got some old school tap handles and here's one a Coors guy should appreciate. <laughs> Who remembers the old school Coors Arctic ice? <laughs> uh, back in high school, this thing was rough. All right, Andrew, well, thank you for the note, brother. Um, let's check out what we got. Oh, that is really cool. So that is a really nice looking man's crankbait. I don't know what the name of this is. It's not a stickleback, uh, but it does absolutely have the old school RC Cola logo, which down in the South, man, little RC and a moon pie. Whew, son, you got yourself a lunch. I like this crankbait. Some of the Rebel Deep We Are's have this. It's got a little weight in the bill. And you can only imagine that when this thing is in the water, that weight, probably makes it angle at a more um, aggressive depth, which is probably gonna get it just a little bit deeper. You don't see a lot of the weights in the bills anymore, and I don't know why that is. I'll probably have to ask somebody who knows modern crankbaits a little bit better, like either Epic Eric or Baitman TV. But I don't see a lot of weights in the bills for any crankbaits these days. Um, but some of the old ones that I've got to do, I, I do feel like they fish a little bit deeper. All right, let's see what else we got here. Oh, so Andrew made me a homemade spinnerbait. Dude, check this out. Oh, wow, that is a good looking little bait. Look at that thing. So what is the inspiration for that curvature? That is a pretty wild um, looking spinnerbait there. And it's got a really nice Sampo ball bearing swivel, a couple of really sweet um, hammered willow leaf blades. I don't know what brand those are. But all in all, man, that is actually a sick looking little bait and oh, you're darn right, son. I'm gonna be fishing with this in those little apartment ponds. Uh, Andrew, if you're watching this, man, drop a comment down below. Let me know about this bait and if any of the Bass and Buds um, can get them from you. Dude, by all means, uh, put your info in there, brother. All right. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah, that is a piece of old school gold right there. That is a, a bagley fat cat. So the big one, I think it's called the mama cat and the regular one's called the fat cat. But that is a money little bait. Oh man, and that is actually in one of the harder colors to find. I don't know the name of this, but it's essentially a chromed out bait with a minnow pattern on it. It is one of the coolest looking patterns around. I'm gonna throw some hooks on that and totally get that in the old crankbait umco tackle box. And last but not least, okay. <laughs> All right, this is exactly what I'm talking about. This bait 100% is coming with me to Donkey Land. Check that thing out. That is an old rebel crankbait, but it's weedless. Oh yes, yeah, son. <laughs> Awesome. Uh, the timing on that could not have been better. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about what we're packing for Donkey Land. I was talking to John the other night, uh, finding out a little bit more about this pretty exclusive body of water and figuring out what kind of baits would be good. Now, John and Lindia, they pretty much exclusively throw swim baits. Uh, they've got a great sponsor by the name of Bruiser Baits. We'll probably fish with some Bruiser stuff while we're there. But those two are pretty much chunking and winding paddle tail swim baits on some heavy braid and cranking in some six to eight pound fish like on the rig. So what I've got packed up here is a mixture of some top waters, some weedless baits, some soft plastic, and I've also got some special baits if we happen to run into uh, a local legend by the name of Roland Martin, who they see every so often down at the boat ramp. So here is my old school Florida tackle box. Uh, hopefully this gets past the baggage claim at Southwest. And I'll show you what we got. I can already tell that John and Lindy are probably just rolling their eyes looking at this, but hey, you invited me. <laughs> you invited me. So here we go. This is my collection so far of baits that I plan to bring to Florida. We'll start with um, the old top row and go down from there pretty quickly. The goal, by the way, for me, 
is to, you know, hopefully spend some time, um, meet a couple of great bass and buds, and ideally get some A-roll footage to use over probably a couple different videos. As you guys know, I do love to talk about the history of the baits that we fish. So my goal is to get down there, chunk and wine some of these baits, hopefully pop a fish or two, and then get back to the studio and really deep dive into the history of those baits. In here, I do have some baits that I have been meaning to fish for quite a while, so I'm really excited to have the chance uh, to get down there and phew, let her rip. So first things first is a bait that I have had, man, since high school. And if you watch this channel at all, you know that this bait has a very special place in my heart. Of course, I'm talking about the Power Pack Shad. For those who haven't seen this one, this is a topwater bait. It is a chugger style topwater. But the magic is when you chug it, you pull the string, and that tail vibrates. This one I'm actually including as a special request by John. He goes, hey man, bring that pull string bait. I guarantee you some big old donkey is gonna smash it. So if nothing else, if I even get a topwater blow up on this, it will be a successful trip for me. So I've got some power pack minnows in some different colors. Some of the ones that I like, this one, the old school black shore minnow. A nice bleeding shad with an orange tail. I, I don't know. <laughs> and I don't know, maybe if we get into a saltwater fish, <laughs> the old red and white. In addition to that, uh, you guys have seen me do a little bit of a frog episode on the Bill Plummer frog. I didn't catch mostly anything aside from like toads on it, so I'm hoping to catch a real toad on this bait. This is a money little frog, and oh man, there is no doubt that a Florida bass would jump all over this. Uh, speaking of Florida, you really can't talk about Florida trophy fishing without mentioning the bass professor, Doug Hannon. Been a huge fan of the late great Bass Professor, and I have a number of lures that he designed back in the day from Burke. I am sure these are totally going to be money on that body of water. First is this one. This is called the Skitter Fish. Fish is a lot like a topwater frog. Really cool bait in a natural uh, shad pattern designed by Doug Hannon. Another bait probably a little bit more familiar to you is this one the old Doug Hannon big bass frog this thing is one of the most natural frogs I remember the first time I saw this in a Bass Pro catalog I just went nuts it doesn't have a ton of action these legs just sort of quiver a little bit but this is actually a really nice fishing a really nice casting frog man I don't know you tell me this won't get smashed in donkey land The next bait, I don't know if this was a Doug Hannon signature bait from Burke, but this one is a pretty cool topwater bait called the Bassassin. It is that soft Burke foam, but this one, yeah, look at that lip. You totally know this thing fishes just like a jitterbug. Plop it across the surface, oh man. <laughs> And last but not least, the Doug Hannon bait I'm most excited to get out on the water is this one. This is called the snake bait. You've seen me feature this before. It's got a foam head, a soft plastic tail, a single hook. Man, I gotta tell you, this thing on some braid, I think it's gonna do some damage down there. First bass I ever caught a fish on was this bait, the old Strike King Bill Dance Grass Frog, and you better believe, Baz and Buds, I'm bringing a few of those with me as well. Don't have a lot of buzz baits with me, but I do have this one. This is from Tom Mann. I think this is actually a man's bait. I forget the name of this thing, but it is a topwater buzz bait that buzzes and it floats. This thing would be perfect for some really thick, matted vegetation. And I was talking to my other bass and bud down in Florida, Ted Lincoln from Ted Lincoln's Fishing Life. He said one of his favorite baits growing up was a Johnson Silver Minnow painted black with a Sharpie. This is actually a black Silver Minnow that I picked up from Jensen Fishing Tackle in Austin 
So I ripped open a couple of these and yeah, buddy, those are coming with. I don't know if this would actually hook a bass, but I got a feeling a bass would hit it. Uh, the old school Hedden Zara mouse. It is a floating mouse, but you can, by the way, hear that rattle. I'm like annoyed by that rattle, so I can only imagine uh, an eight pound bass would be equally annoyed by that rattle, which is a good thing. And it's got a single hook. Uh, you know, location and style of that hook makes me a little bit nervous that I would actually hook a bass if you hit it. But this thing looks about as weedless of a bait as you can get. Another top water bait from Hedden is this one called the Old Moss Boss. This one is still available today. It is essentially like a plastic spoon that just kind of skirts right on the top. Not a ton of action to it unless you walk it. But it's got some really nice color patterns. A uh, single hook, a little living rubber skirt, and yeah, we might be able to entice a bass to hit this thing. This one I know will work. The old school offering from Bill Norman called the Weed Walker. This one actually has an internal blade and when you pull this thing over the top of the water, that thing spins and it makes a holy ruckus. Not sure if weather conditions will permit, but you better believe I'm bringing a few big old will leaf spinner baits down to Florida. So this is an old school one from Strike King. <laughs> it is the old one ouncer and check out that weed bell it's got on there. This is actually a really cool bait. I've got it in a couple of different colors with that monster will leaf blade. This one in the classic white chartreuse and lime. And then I've got another which by the way probably has one of the prettiest heads of any spinnerbait I've ever seen. Look at that. In a nice little bluegill pattern. And I guarantee son, those fish down there will eat a bluegill. So we'll see if we get to throw that big old spinnerbait. Speaking of big spinnerbaits, I do also have this one from Mans. This one is called The Legend. And it is a really cool bait designed by Paul Elias back in the day when he had like the full giant beard. What it is, it is a double willow leaf blade, but it's got a little spacer in here. And the willow leaf, I guess it's actually a triple willow leaf, because check that out. It's got two blades on the rear. So these two spinnerbaits, I'm pretty excited. I think they would actually work down there if we get the conditions for some spinnerbait fishing. In the off chance that we do see Roland Martin anywhere around the vicinity, Bass and Buds, you know that I can't uh, have that encounter without a tackle box full of old school Roland Martin baits. So the first one I've got, I've actually got some of these in the package. Maybe I'll get them to sign a few. I've got some out of the package as well, and it is the old Diamond Rattler. It's like rattling a lot, I'm sorry. This is a Diamond Rattler in black, and it is a top water bait, eh, sort of reminiscent of the old school wood chopper, but it's got a really nice rattle. Again, sort of that annoying top water rattle that makes a bass want to just smack it. And a couple of dual blades. I've got them in black. And then also this uh, sort of gray swirl that I have fished with. I've never actually fished with a black, but I've definitely caught some bass on that dude. So this is an old school Roland Martin bait, believe it or not. I've got some in the package, and if we see him there, I'll definitely be busting those out. <laughs> and we can't talk Roland Martin without this. You better believe I'm bringing some helicopter lures with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. I'm gonna make you throw a helicopter lure before we are all said and done. <laughs> That is my uh, abbreviated gear selection for Florida. I've got a few more things in a different tackle box, but as you can imagine, I am running around um, trying to grab rods, reels, lures, and Hawaiian shirts as quickly as I can. So by the time you see this video, Bass and Buds, I will be in the Sunshine State, although I probably will not have hit Donkey Land as of yet, just sort of the way our schedules are working out. So go ahead, drop a comment down below. Let me know which lure you saw today that you most want me to fish with down there. Definitely gonna have a little time to contemplate my, uh, my choices on the water. So by all means, let me know what kind of old school gold you wanna see me try to catch a big old Florida bass on. And do me a favor, Bass and Buds, head on over to Small Water Charters YouTube channel. 
Uh, John and Lindia, they catch some big old bass and have one heck of a good time while they're doing it. You know, John and I were talking about the goals for this trip, and I said, look, you know, I, I'd like to catch a, a big old bass for sure. I'd like to do it on some old school gear, but more than anything, uh, I want to help out a fellow YouTuber and I want to get him monetized. They are super close to hitting that threshold, so I'm pretty sure that the Bass and Buds can put them over the line in the next couple of months. Until next time, Bass and Buds, keep the carpet side up and definitely fish it old school. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bass. Yeah.